All right, people, notes 3.7 are on applications of quadratic relations. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what's given to us here. In question number one, it says a video tracking device recorded the height h in meters of a baseball after it was hit. The data collected can be modeled you, uh, by the equation h equals negative 5 times t minus 2 quantity squared plus 21, where t is the time in seconds after the baseball was hit. So first thing that's going to be helpful to us is knowing the form that we're looking at. So this is vertex form. Um, and we know it's vertex form because it's in the form y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And we know that our vertex is going to have to be at 221. We also know that t is the time in seconds. So that's going to go on the x-axis. And we know that h is the height in meters. So that's going to go on the y-axis. And we know that the, the highest it's going to reach is 21 meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place like, um, maybe I'll put a 5 here, a 10 here, a 15 here, a 20 here, and a 25 here so I can go up high enough. And I know that it's going to occur at 2 seconds right here. So my time right here, I'll just say 1 here, 2 here, 3, 4, and 5. Um, and it says question A says to sketch the relation. So the only thing that we really know at this point in time is just where the vertex is. So I know the vertex is going to occur at 221. So we know that this is going to be the highest point. Let's also find the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, just a reminder, the y-intercept will happen when x is 0. So here I'm going to say h equals negative 5 times 0 minus 2 squared plus 21. So I'm just using the exact same equation that was given to us, but I'm going to replace the t, which is like x, with 0. So I guess this is technically called the h-intercept. So here I'm going to say negative 5 times 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So here negative 5 times 4 is negative 20, plus 21 is 1. So here we know that our y-intercept is going to occur at 0, 1. So our h-intercept, I keep saying y-intercept, I mean to say h-intercept, is at 0, 1. Now, because this is a distance of 2 from my vertex, which has my axis of symmetry, there's going to be another distance of 2 before the height will be 1 again, right? Because this is going to be symmetrical here to the other side. So now we have enough information to draw, again, it's just a sketch. It's not the like fullest amount of information, but it's definitely enough for us to get a visual on what's happening here. And now that's going to help us answer all the questions that we have here. So the maximum height of the ball, we can find the maximum height of the ball from our graph right here, or just from our equation. We know that it is 21 meters. This will tell us the maximum height right here. When did the maximum height occur? At what time did this happen at? We know it's going to happen at two seconds from our graph, as well as from our vertex, as well as from our equation right here. How high was the ball after one second? So we need to go ahead and actually um, plug that in to our equation here. So if it's asking us how high the ball is when um, the time was, was one second, that means that t would equal one. So I'm going to replace this t with one. I'm going to zoom in so that way um, you can see what I'm writing here. So I'm going to say h equals negative five. I'm going to replace the t with one. And then I'm just going to copy everything else down exactly how I see it. So um, one squared, or sorry, one minus two is negative one copy everything else down. I can figure out that negative 1 squared is positive 1. I know negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. So I know that this is going to occur, or sorry, I know that this is going to reach a height of 16 meters. So um, our answer here is going to be 16 meters. So we know that at one second, our height will be at approximately, it will be at 16 meters. When will that happen again? Right? That's the, the next question. Determine another time when the ball will reach this height. Well, we know right here that this is the axis of symmetry. And this is one second away from the axis of symmetry. So we know that after another second after the axis of symmetry, we will reach a height of 16. So that will be at 3 seconds. Okay? And then the last question is from what height was the ball hit? We already figured that out from our y-intercept. 
because um, we want to know from what height the ball was hit, that would be where the time is equal to zero. The ball was hit, no time has gone by, it's right at the beginning. So here, the height would be one meter. So therefore, the ball was hit at a height of one meter. In our next example, we're told that Chris kicked a ball from the ground. It traveled a horizontal distance of 52 meters and reached a maximum height of 17 meters. Draw a sketch of the relation between horizontal distance and height. So since we're doing the relation between horizontal distance, we'll put the horizontal distance on the x-axis, um, and that's measured in meters. It would make sense to put it on the x-axis because x is horizontal. And then we will put um, the height on the y-axis. That makes sense because the height is vertical. Um, and we know that it was kicked from the ground. So we know that when at zero uh, horizontal meter distance, the ball was at zero meters vertical distance. It had It's on the ground right at the beginning. And it traveled a horizontal distance of 52 meters. Don't draw this in. I'm just going to show you what's going to happen. So Chris kicks the ball. It goes up. Gravity kind of um, takes its toll, starts to pull it back down. It comes back down. It hits the ground. Um, so it hits the ground at a distance of 52 meters. So I'm going to put 52 right at the end, and I know that it hits the ground right here. We also know that it reaches a maximum height of 17 meters right here. So I know that that's the highest it's going to go. So I'm going to just put 10 here and then 20 here. So the highest it reaches is 17 meters. When would that happen? Halfway in between when the ball was on the ground at the beginning and when it was on the ground at the end. So that will occur right here, halfway in the middle. And since this is at zero and this is at 52, half of 52 is 26. So we know that this is gonna happen at 26. Just like we've always done, we know that the roots are at zero and 52, and we know the vertex will occur halfway in between, so we just average those two numbers, and we get 26, okay? So we know that this is going to be the maximum height that it's going to reach. So this is a rough sketch of what my graph will look like. Okay, so then it says determine the equation of the relation in factored form. So I have to use y equals a times x minus r times x minus s. I could technically use vertex form because I know the vertex as well, but I have to use factored form because that's what it says to do. So based on this, I know that um, the r value is 0 and the s value is 52. Again, you can um, interchange those, totally fine. But I prefer to put the r as 0 because, again, x minus 0 turns into just x which turns into a monomial, so it's just a lot easier to deal with it this way. So here I get y equals a times x, because x minus 0 is just x, times x minus 52. But I have to solve for a, and a better be a negative value. I have one more piece of information left for me to use, and that is the vertex, which occurred at 26, 17. So we know that the y value we're going to plug in is 17. We know that the x value that we're going to plug in is 26. So here I end up getting 17 equals a times 26 and then 26 minus 52 is negative 26. So here I get 17 equals 26 times negative 26 is negative 676 a. Let's bring this up over here. Divide both sides by negative 676 and a is negative 17 over 676, which means that my equation would be negative 17 over 676 x times x minus 52. So I'm just using this equation right here and plugging in the a value. And that's it for that question. In number three, it says a projectile is launched from ground level. So I'm just going to draw a quick sketch of what's happening here. So it's pro uh, we have a projectile. It's launched from ground level. It reaches a maximum height of 122.5 meters after five seconds. And so we know it's going to reach its maximum height, and then gravity is going to start to bring it back down. Write an equation to model this situation. Find A algebraically. Now, technically, 
You could use vertex form or factored form. It doesn't matter because I know the vertex is going to occur at this point right here, but I also know that the roots occur at zero. And because this is symmetrical, this is another five away. So this would be at 10. So you can use either form that you would like. I'll just use vertex form because we just used factored form last time. So here I'm going to say y equals a times x minus 5 squared, got the 5 from the vertex, plus 122.5, also got that from the vertex. And then I can take either point here and plug it in to solve for a. I'm going to use 0, 0 because this is nice and easy to plug in. So I'm going to plug in 0 for y and 0 for x. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So I get 0 equals 25a plus 122.5. Let's come up here because we're running out of room. Get rid of this 122.5 by subtracting it on both sides. Divide both sides by 25 and I get negative 4.9, which is actually a super important number in physics and gravity. Um, it's not a coincidence that we ended up getting this number. You'll learn about it um, if you haven't already uh, in science class. And so now we can say that our equation is, I will just use this right here, but I'm going to replace the A with negative 4.9. And just so that you know, if I were to do this using factored form, I would still get A as negative 4.9. And in fact, if I wanted to write this out in factored form, I don't have to do any work right here. I could just say, since factored form is um, a times x minus r times x minus s, I could say a is negative 4.9 because it doesn't change, times x minus 0 times x minus 10. Got the 0 and the 10 from the roots here. So I would end up getting uh, negative 4.9x times x minus 10. These two are equivalent to each other. Okay, when does the projectile hit the ground? We already figured this out. It would take 10 uh, seconds for it to reach the ground. What is the projectile's height after three seconds? We can use either equation to solve for this. I'll use the one that we boxed in. Since we're talking about seconds, then I'm going to say that the t equals three, um, or that the x equals three. Sorry, I should say right here, since we used x here. So I'm going to say y equals negative 4.9 times 3 minus 5 squared plus 122.5. Same thing that we've always done right here. Hopefully this is just second nature to you by now. Um, so right here, I'm going to replace all of this information in here. Negative 2 squared is uh, positive 4. Do your multiplication here, negative 4.9 times 4, negative 19.6, plus 122.5 right here will give me 102.9 meters. So we can say here, therefore, its height would be 102.9 meters. And then when will this occur again? Well, we know that 3 is 2 away from 5, and so we know right here this has to be at 102.9. The other side has to be the same, so right here we know that it's going to be another 2 away, so 5 plus 2 is 7, so um, this will also occur at 7 seconds. And that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to note them down and ask me. Uh, and I'll see you in class. Have a good one. Bye.